Hey everybody, welcome to Working Horses with Jim. Today, Jim is doing some training. He has Earl together with Ken. And they are actually pulling something. Okay, hi everybody. So, I had a bunch of things I want to talk about as I'm continuing this training process with, with Earl and then we're going to go to, to Duke also. Um, maybe not in this video, but maybe it will be. Anyways, um, this is the second day I've been doing this. Yesterday we started and they did really good and uh, hopefully they'll continue that. So I'll have Brenda um, just follow along or ride whatever she'd like to do and I'll talk about a few things in the process of training these colts. I cut stop. So there's a bunch of things to talk about and I'm sure I won't even remember all of them. If Ken gets finished up doing what he always does, careful. So as most of you have been following my videos, you know what I've been doing with these three-year-old colts of mine. And now it's, in the, it's time to put them in with Ken and start the training process on the sled. I've talked to you a lot of times about how horses are not born with the ability to pull loads. They have to be taught that. So that's what we're doing now. This is the first time these colts have been hitched onto anything that actually have to pull. And if you'll notice here on my evener, I've got this set on the, the holes in these eveners there, so that Baron does have the easiest pull of these two. Ken is such a great horse at doing this job. He can pull this sled alone, but he doesn't want to. And so Baron, I mean, um, uh, Earl has got to pull his share. And it's my job as their trainer and as their leader to make that happen. Um, training horses is a lot like training our children. With even, even in the Bible, it teaches us to, and don't, don't worry, I'm not going to be preaching to you from the Bible, but there are a couple things that are so much the same type of thing as, as training horses and training kids. So we, even in the Bible, the, it teaches us to, you spare the rod, you spoil the child type of, of mentality. And, and I agree 100% with that, both with children and with horses and colts. But, 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 this is a very important but. It also tells us in the Bible not to exact, exact, what's that word about it? Exasperate. Exasperate our children. In other words, don't be too harsh on them that you spoil them by being too harsh or too, um, you, you use the rod too much. And it's so much the same with horses. Oh, oh. And I'd like to add right here at this point that uh, in spite of my failures, in at times, oh, asking too much of my kids. They've turned out wonderfully well. And I'm so pleased and thankful for that. Um, I have failed so much in the process of training my kids, just like I have so often failed in the process of training my horses. But it's still the way we have to look at it. So when I am working with, with these colts, I have to use the whip out on them to get them go ahead when they need to go ahead. But I have to be very careful not, oh, not to overdo it. You know, he's a colt. He's never going to, he's not going to be, for some period of time, as good as can. So I have to take that into consideration and be patient with him and not overdo the whip at all. I cast out. So in the process of using the whip and starting them, for example, um, I have to make sure they go together. I'm very particular about that. I want my horses, so often people think, well, they have a lead horse. Well, there's some truth to that, but I just, I don't like that way of thinking at things. I'm their lead horse. I'm the one that tells them what to do and I expect them to follow and, ex and do just what I tell them to do. So even though I know Ken at this stage is going to start the load faster and better than Earl, I need to make sure that I'm ready with the whip so that they start it together. Because if I ask Ken to go and 
Earl just stands there, which is so common for a colt, then Ken will go, even though he's well trained, oh, he'll still go out and start to pull and realize that Earl's not doing anything, so he'll stop. And in the other side of things, if I go and give Earl a quick crack and he starts and Ken doesn't start as fast, Earl will go ahead, ho, oh, oh, and realize I can't pull this or he thinks he can't pull this on his own type of thing. So he'll just stop and then Ken will start and you've got this seesawing motion that you get nowhere with. So it's very, very, very important to make sure they both go together and they follow my commands, not, not what they want to do or not by allowing one of them to be the lead horse, because that's really not, in my opinion, the best way to look at it. So quite often what I do, it just kind of depends, but I would actually be ready to touch Ken to start with, because he does start kind of slow. And then I will, at the, as soon as I touch him, I'll swing over and I'll hit Earl slightly so that he goes as soon as possible too. So they start kind of together. And it just kind of depends on the situation. Uh, let's just see how it goes this time. I kept, Ken, come step. So that worked really well by going that way. And while we're walking, I'm watching the evener, or actually the whipple tree right here, and making sure that's staying up there where it can, which is what I always want. I want these two whipple trees to be side by side. And I know because of the colt, because Earl's a colt, that's not gonna stay that way. He'll go ahead faster. He'll back up, he'll kind of slow back, go backwards. And so I have to keep watching that to make sure they stay together. If it, this lags behind an awful lot, there's, there again, that's a fine line. You gotta know when to do it and when not to do it. But if it lags too much back and stays back there, I'll reach up here and tap him with the, with the whip to get him up there where he belongs. Yesterday, Ken was being the first time with these colts, he was a little bit, oh, I guess, um, it bothered him a little bit. So he was actually going way too fast. Today he's working so much better and walking his normal pace, which is so much easier on the colt. So now he's walking his slow, normal pace. And so the colts can kind of keep up with him without having to work, you know, extra hard. And that's a great thing. So I'll probably go around this field one more time and then I will swap horses. So this will be our third time around the field. And as you notice, I am going clockwise, oh, sorry, I'm going counterclockwise around this field. Now there's a very good reason for that. And eventually I will actually swap and, and not today, but go counterclockwise and clockwise. But when you have a young horse hitched up with an older horse to help do the training, it is easier for Ken to pull Earl to the left than it is to push him to the right. When I'm parked at the truck body, I, I like it such that I can turn to the left because Ken will actually pull him, Earl, a lot easier to the left than it is to push him to the right. Now, he has to learn to go to the right also. So after, you know, a few days of going to the left like this, I'm going to swap sides and I'll, I'll go to the, to the right. And then he'll have to learn how to go that way also. Over time, I will still be also swapping sides with these guys. Ken can work on either side. So I will swap sides and put the Colts on the left hand side and put Ken over here on the right. And that'll teach him more things still. You want to ride, Brenda? Sure. I want to get a front view first. Okay. One other thing and reason of what I'm doing as you'll see, I am actually sitting on the left, on the right hand side of this sled. And I've explained this many times before, but by sitting over here, it puts more pressure on Ken's lines. And that's, I don't want any more pressure on Earl's line than I need to, because he just doesn't need it. He's a young colt. Um, but 
yesterday Ken was kind of aggressive and he's not today so it's a lot better but uh, so I had to sit way over here to put more pressure on his lines to slow him down but I, I still even today prefer sitting over here that's one reason why like on my carts all of my carts have bench seats so I can slide back and forth on the seat to put more pressure on a particular horse when need be so right what? now can I ask you yeah. something would you say the evener is a little bit further ahead on Ken, yes. so he really is pulling more than Well, he's walking fast. Earl. He's walking fast. He's, he's always pulling more because this evener is set up in such a way that he's, this, this red um, uh, clavis right here is slid in a little ways, and this one's out to the very end. So he's always got more, less leverage. Earl has more leverage on the evener than Ken does. This, by the way, is is the broken clevis, not the broken clevis, but the a different clevis that I was able to put in here because this was the evening I used in the horse pole, if you recall. I broke the clevis, and so that's just a replacement, a temporary replacement, until I get a, I'll probably buy two more good sets of clevises, one on each side so they don't break. But that's a nice story. But, so you're just saying, Earl's is on the outside, Ken's is on the inside, and yes. that's where the difference is. It sure doesn't look like very much at all. It's a it's a it's a physics thing, it's right? A physics thing. Yes, yes. Was it never was my favorite subject. I never took it in school. Don't know a thing about it. You just know it in real life. The most important thing. A lot of days on a second day of doing something different like this, they're actually a lot worse than the first day. But uh, Earl has done very, very good. I'm very pleased with him. And you'll see, I don't, I don't stop a lot. Oh, oh. I'm not concerned about teaching him to stop and to stand, um, especially when you're pulling a heavy sled like this. Uh, it pulls hard, and he can't start, hardly start this load alone. So as long as Ken stands good, which he does, um, Earl really can't do anything. He just has to stand. And as far as stopping, that's not a problem either, because Ken will stop, and then Earl will have to stop. But he knows his, his hole pretty good anyways. And, uh, but starting is really important too. Starting is, is more difficult and actually at this stage than um, stopping because the, the sled is heavy. And so they actually have to pull. And I've talked about this before. I did earlier, you know, just the fact that you've got to teach them how to pull. And this is, this is the start of teaching them to pull. And it's, he's at a great advantage over some Horse is getting trained because he's got a good horse beside him to teach him to pull. I was just going to ask you, what if they, what if somebody doesn't have another horse? Then what do you do? Well, that's a whole other ball game. And I was actually going to train the two colts together just to kind of show that, and I chose not to, just because the colts seem to be so much different in speed and gait. Um, and not only that, I just, it's just so much safer to go with Ken, and and generally so much faster to do the process of getting them trained but when you do it with two you've just got to put them onto well you can't put them onto a load this heavy because they wouldn't the two colts wouldn't even pull it so you'd have to actually go with a cart and it's just the chances of a runaway are just higher with the two colts and a light load behind them but if you only had one horse would you um well one horse is different because you can just slowly build them up and train them and i did it with i did it with baron basically i mean yes he went on with with ken some but he still <laughs> did quite a lot of single work and these guys will eventually too if i can get the time to do it like starting with pulling a tire yes. or something like yes. that and then going on to the cart and a log and, yeah. yeah i've cast up cast up that was a great start there. Careful. <coughs> well, we better go back to the truck body and we can swap horses. One other thing. Yesterday, um, Earl was surprisingly lazy. He just did not walk. The evener was really, he was really hanging back. Today he's walking way better. Now that may be partially because Ken is actually walking slower than he did yesterday. So it's not, it doesn't seem so bad. But uh, 
when I hitched up Duke, I was shocked and amazed at his energy level. I mean, he was almost dragging Ken around the field. He it was amazing, but uh, we'll see how it goes today. I am very, very pleased with Earl how, how well he's done. He seems to be like a lot calmer and everything. Well, he was he was calm yesterday, too calm. But oh. no, he just he just pulling more of he, his share. But don't you think sometimes he he's like a little bit rebellious? Like he doesn't want to do it. Well, so he, that's the way it is with a lot of horses, and that's the way it is with a lot of kids. That's why right. you need to not to spare the rod, or you'll spoil the child. But yet not to not to mess up the child, but make them do too much. Right. And uh, being too harsh on them. Mm-hmm. But the more he learns at a young age, the better he's going to be. So often coming to the truck body like this, Ken knows we're headed there. So he'll go kind of a little bit faster than a colt that doesn't know. So I have to kind of get after Earl to keep him up there at this stage. Oh, okay. That went really good. I was really pleased with, with Earl. So now we'll get him changed and I'll show you how we do that. Okay so we decided to actually leave these guys for half an hour and so one more lesson for Earl to learn just to stand here next to Ken at the truck body so he gets that experience there. So now I'm going to start on hitching and at this stage I am not going to even attempt to drive them over for two reasons. Um, it's just a lot easier just to unhitch them and leave Ken right here and go and get Duke and then hitch him up. So I will get the evener unhitched. Got the lines separated and hitched up to their harnesses. A lot of times when you have, when you do this, your your horse, that is the training horse, which is Ken, he does not like to stand here when you take the other horse away. So sometimes he kind of moves around a little bit, but he's pretty good at it and so he'll be fine. Well, do you think he, doesn't realize he's not hitched to the other horse. Well, he first. we did this yesterday, so he'll be fine. Sometimes he'll kind of step over the pole to head to the barn, but he'll realize he can't. So he'll be fine. Because you're really gonna lead him, right? I'm gonna lead Earl. Yeah. Oop. Be careful. Okay. Okay, he'll be fine. I'll be right back. You stay there with him, Brenda. Just a minute, Kenny. Okay, so when I'm bringing a colt in like this, I like to swing them over here. So they're gonna come in in such a way that their butt is more out to be over here where they belong. Come here, come here. Kind of too bad, we got a lot of rain last night. It's kind of a mud hole here. Come on, Duke, get up here. Come here. Okay. So I'm gonna hitch him and get the neck yoke hitched up. If you recall, I don't know, it might've been a couple weeks ago now, I, oh, I allowed the two colts to be hitched to this stone, this sled. They didn't do any pull it, but they were just hot, hitched together to this sled for a period of, quite a long period of time, a few different days even, I think, which is a great learning lesson for them. So they learned to stand a little bit better. Another thing I do, actually yesterday, I had a, my a lighter duty neck yoke on 
And as I was going, especially with Duke, I was really afraid I might break the neck yoke and then that would have been terrible. So I put a heavier duty, better neck yoke on to be safe there. Also, another thing I do quite often in a situation like this, and I forgot to do it with Earl, but I take a lead rope from the Colts halter back to Ken's Hames. Just an extra safety precaution, which I feel works great. Okay, so they're hitched up front. Lines are all ready. Duke is standing in place extremely well, so I want to get him hitched first. So, I, I must tell you that um, if you guys are starting out and going to train a horse, these guys have had a lot of initial training, as you've seen in my videos. And they have done extremely well. And I have had many, many, many occults that was just gone almost crazy even at this point. And, uh, but these guys are doing so good. Just, I guess I'm saying that because you can't get in here. There, there's gonna be times if you guys wanna start training horses that it may not go quite this smooth. <laughs> so. I can remember even the very first time, back pen. I believe it was the very first time I hitched up Ken and his brother who died several years later, but his brother were together and they were very young horses, probably three year olds at the time. And uh, I hitched them onto a lighter sled than this because this would have been too heavy. And uh, I, uh, we lost them. We were headed out through this field out here. And I can't remember the details of it all. This was many, many, many years ago. But yeah, we lost them. Um, they took off a running and something broke. It was not a good situation. Um, so when you guys, for you guys that have had runaways before, it's amazing how well those runaways stick in your head because of it, you do things differently. Um, fortunately for us, the runaways I have had over the years, no one's got really hurt. Back up, Ken. Bye. That bit. No one's actually got hurt, horses or myself but they are usually very, very good learning experiences as long as you allow them to be a learning experience. Unfortunately, they usually stick with the horses too, don't they? They do quite often, yes. Okay, so we are ready to go. Um, here's another situation, like I said earlier, the importance of having the older horse on the left hand side and going left to get him out of this spot um, it just works so much better he can pull the horse a lot easier than he would be able to push him cap stop Oh, 
So, as you saw, Ken really had to physically drag him around the corner at the truck body. And that is so often what happens. And those are some of the very big issues if you attempt to take two young horses like Duke and Earl and put them on a sled like this and think and expect that they're gonna pull it. You might have a rude awakening because one will try and then the other tries. One will try and they won't pull together because they don't know how to yet. Oh, whereas in this situation, I had to get right after to Duke to get him to go ahead and he just wasn't responding and jumping ahead. So Ken actually had to drag him out of that spot to get going. Did Earl do a lot better last time when he started out? Yeah, he was fine. I cast out. So like I said earlier, yesterday Duke just had so much energy and he wanted to go fast, fast, fast. And he wasn't stupid about it. He just surprised me with how much energy he had and how well he held his side of the evener up. And I can feel he's gonna probably be fine today even still. Um, he had a couple times yesterday that he kind of wanted to bolt a little bit, which is very normal and not surprising on a young horse, but it was very short lived. As you can see, going around corners, turning is very difficult for these young horses until they learn how to do it. So if all goes smooth, we're pretty well going to do the same thing, go around two, maybe three times. And uh, do mostly just walk in with them steadily and stop them a few times, but not that many, so that they learn to start the load. I, I must say I've always expected Duke to be a real deadhead and not have too much energy, not have a lot of pulling ability. But after yesterday, it made me think, well, maybe he will, you know, I was surprised. I've said this earlier also, and I still think and hope to um, do some plowing with these colts this fall. If things go as planned, they'll have a lot of plowing to do. And I think, just to give you an idea of what I'm thinking, um, of course it's early, it's probably maybe not even wise to even tell you what I'm thinking because who knows what'll happen. But my plan is to get a couple weeks on the sled like this, and then I'll take my cart and set it up for three horses and set, put, uh, put the colts be on each side of Ken, so Ken is in the center, and then um, hitch him up and drive him around on that cart. That way it'll be so much easier on me and my time because I'm training both the colts at the same time. But I want to do it this way for the first couple weeks and then we'll move on to the next. So as I've said in many of my videos, you know, the way I do things, the way I train horses is not the only way to train horses. So many of you guys do it totally different than I do and it works great for you and that's, that's great. Um, I have no issues with other people training in different ways. Train your horse whatever way it works. So anyways, we'll take them around a little bit more and then we'll put them away. Cut stop. Okay. 
Okay, after they've had a good half hour break at the truck to get back to standing, we're off again. We go around one more time and call it quits. It's surprising with Duke. This is his third time around and he's really starting to slow down. That's why it's important not to overdo it, especially on a, a heavy sled like this. Because um, colts get tired very fast. I think he is getting tired. It's a tired teenager. Yep. And Ken is getting a little bit more energetic. Well, not really energetic, but he's uh, not very happy with having to be stuck in training these young ones. Yeah, can't blame them there. First he had Baron, and now he's got Duke and Earl. Another thing I thought of too, um, Maybe you can remind me here uh, when we actually put, I guess it was last year. I think it was just a three-year-old Baron when I put him on the sled. Because I was, remember last fall, we were fixing fence with Baron. Yeah, I think it was. So they're about at the same stage. It just seemed like this summer, because of the death of Buck, he's had to really do a lot of work mm -hmm. and he's more now of our, our regular workhorse and so it just seems like it's been so much progress so quickly yep. this summer. Flies are bothering Ken too. Yeah. They're not the nasty horse flies but they're just very pesky like stable flies. Had, uh, had had no luck with fly sprays or hardly any luck. But maybe this time of year, maybe, maybe that it'll work better. I could give it a try. Might. Should try it. Try it again. You're walking nice and slowly. Mm -hmm. Too slow for your liking? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Ken's like taking baby steps. <laughs> I got a question for people. Ask it. So, um, I have shared a lot of videos on how I train, and uh, I'm, I'm happy the way I train. I, I'm, I'm, you know, it's, I'm more than willing to learn more things, and I, I do learn more things as we go along. But I guess I'd like to tell you guys or ask you guys that actually have done a lot of training horses and, and working with horses to, even in the comments below, I, I know I have a lot of people that are learning this. Um, and are new to horses and so they're learning from me how to train horses they're learning from me how to work horses but I, I've said this plenty of you know I don't know it all I don't uh, claim it's the only way if you guys have ways to train your horses put them in the comments below you'd be surprised how many people uh, read the comments and will learn from the way you do it even though you're not actually showing on a video like I am um, you're still giving us ideas and I say us because I I can still learn. I, I read the comments and if there's little tidbits that I can pick up that would help me in my training, I would be, I'd appreciate it. You think this old dog can learn some new tricks? Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, that didn't go quite so smooth. When, when uh, Ken or any of the older horses come into this truck by, they usually come in pretty fast because they know what's involved that they're stopping to rest and the colt doesn't know that, so. But anyways, they did really good. So let's try something a little bit new. Last night when I worked these two, I did it this way. I actually unhitched them and I drove them together over to the um, barn.
when I'm, they're not at the stage that yet that I want to teach them to drive over the tongue by themselves yet. Although it will, it will be soon. Um, and Ken is so good at stepping on the pole, so they'll come right in here hopefully and, and come right in place. But as of right so far in the last two days, I have just led them over and that's worked just fine at this early stage. And uh, when I'm swapping horses, there's no sense taking Ken inside, so I just leave them right here. But now they're both going inside, so I will attempt to just drive them over to the barn, which I did last night, and they did fine. I expect them to do fine today. Cast up. She. She. Cast. Oh. Hey, Brenda, if you could just go to the heads, we'll get them unhitched and put away. It is really starting to warm up nicely up there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay, just hold him. Oh, no. Okay, I got him. I got him. Yep. Be careful. I think Ken's kind of mad because, like, he's. Always has to wait, and now the, the, the little kids, he's got to wait for the little kids. Patience, Ken, patience. Where's his senior? He's got some seniority here. Hey guys, who's this? Is this Earl or is this Baron? So what's for lunch today, Brenda? Um, I was thinking scrambled eggs because we've got so many eggs. I know it's a weird lunch thing, but. Sounds good to me. I made some sourdough English muffins, so we'll have that with it. I hope you guys have a great day today. We'll see you next time around and enjoy the fall. Come on, Ken. Come on. Get in there. Get in there.
Yeah. Get it.